It's Leon Allen Wake. I came to Bright Falls with my wife, Alice. Thank you for coming here with me. I thought maybe you could write here. I don't want to hear it. God damn it, Alice. Now, she's missing. Alice? Ah! Alice? I woke up behind the wheel of a crashed car. I'm missing a week. I was attacked by shadowy men straight from a nightmare. The sheriff took me to the lake Alice and I had stayed at. But the cabin had disappeared. Look, doesn't look like a bum anymore. But he's wearing the same damn jacket. Because he doesn't make enough money to buy new jackets. Honey, I'm home. Back here, sweetie. How was it? Worst weather I've ever seen. You should put some coffee on. It'll warm you up. Good idea. We'll go do that. Ooh, it is. It's galing out there. Jeez, look at that place. Coffee's on. Great, thanks. I'll need it if I'm gonna finish this by tomorrow. It's a very nice TV. Let's go see Alice. Oh, hey. I hey. just finished those cover mock-ups. They're on your desk. Tell me what you think. Just gonna see the coffee. No, no problems. I didn't think you'd get them done this quickly. On occasion, I can perform all sorts of miracles, my dear. Oh, really? Well, you seem to think so last night. Oh, ho, ho, ho. she got you there. That's a very nice looking uh, blood splatter. Very nice. Okay, this picture's making it look creepy, man. Just saying. I guess that's what you're going for, maybe. So you are a thriller writer, so... It is a thing. Alan Wake returned to sender. Is there a radio somewhere? Oh shit! I never noticed this was here before. The continuing freezing rain and heavy snowfall have necessitated a winter storm warning in the entire tri-state area. People are advised to stay indoors as many roadways are already closed. And city officials are not expecting snow crews to keep up with the weather. We're now on the third day of the blizzard, and the weather is not expected to clear up anytime soon. Shit. Like I said, I played this game almost three times, and I'd never noticed that it was there before. Huh. Go figure. Wow, you guys have no clothes. Well then. I guess you guys, that's why you're wearing the same jacket and sweatshirt. <laughs> Well, at least you remember the toilet paper. That's a good thing. Alright, let's go back into our, our office. Manuscripts. It's true what they say about the fall and the sudden stop at the end. I'd lain here in the snow while the lurid chain of scenes that had led me here kept playing in my head. A rerun of my own private snuff movie. A memory of my corpse. Alone at my own wake, thinking in metaphors again. The femme fatale was gone. Only a sour taste remained of the kiss that killed me. So that's the guy from Max Payne reading these things. This it's pretty was cool. a late goodbye. Thirteen years after I'd gotten my revenge, it had finally caught up with me. It had been a long time to bear the pain. My blood painted the snow red. A gruesome, slushy dissolved all the scattered painkillers and leisurely dripped down to the sewer mingling with the bile of the city becoming one with it I can see them now my wife and my baby honey I'm home I swear to god that guy can make anything sound awesome these look really good Oh, sure, until Barry gets his hands on them. Whoa. Which, by the way, will if, happen over like, my dead body. Bet hearing the or something, Jesus. The last time was the last time. Oh, and speaking of Barry, he called. <gasps> Whoa, lights. Alan? Right Alan, here. Please check the fuse box. Okay. I'm okay. right here. Oh, I'm on it, honey. I'll go. Please hurry. I'm, I'm going. All right, calm down. Jesus. You are needy. 
Honey, it's a power outage. I I've got the flashlight. Okay. Hi. Hi. You okay? I'm sorry. I just... It just really spooked me. Don't worry. We'll just break out the candles. I know it's stupid, but it's just... Especially when I'm not prepared for it, you know? It gets to me. I love you. Doll. Tell me a story, writer. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> I used to have these nightmares when I was a kid. The dark really spooked me, too. When it got really bad, my mom gave me this old light switch. She called it the clicker. The clicker, huh? Yeah. If I ever got scared of the dark, I could just flip the switch and a magic light would scare the monsters away. Oh, sure. Here it is. Alan. Maybe it'll help you, too. <laughs> yeah, nice story, writer boy. You made that up right now, didn't you? No, no. <laughs> Seriously. I love you. Even if you are a liar. Thanks for this. Brick Falls, the present day. Hmm. How do you feel, Mr. Wake? Any nausea, disorientation, anything like that? Mr. Wake, how are you feeling? Yes, you just asked that. I'm okay. My head's fine. I had to lie about my headache and memory loss. He'd send me to a hospital for tests. I couldn't leave without Alice. Mm, very well. Um, I don't think you have a concussion, but you've obviously been through quite a shock. You should take it easy for a couple of days. Thanks. Well then, Mr. Wake, we're done here. If the pain gets any worse or you experience any other symptoms, you should come see me. I'll let you get on with it then. Sarah, uh, Sheriff Breaker, is waiting for you. She's very good at her job. I'm sure she can locate your wife in no time. I hope so. Doc Nelson was the image of a small town doctor. Sheriff Breaker had called him to the station to take a look at the cut in my head. It's a nice I'm fish. I'm sorry you had to cut your morning fishing short for this, Doc. Oh, she's a beauty, ain't she? Not the biggest I ever caught, if you can believe that coming from an old fisherman like me. But she's right up there. Now, she's a largemouth bass, which is what you're after if you prefer a lure. Now, if you want either trout or salmon, on the other hand, then it's fly fishing for you. Yeah, I can't uh, fly fish to save my life. Man, Mr. Wake? Oh, doesn't really matter, I suppose. But it can be very relaxing out there. You can't get me off the water this time of year. Closest thing to heaven. I'll take your word for it, Doc. He's a good man. Wait, what? What is this? Are we like 1984 now? Jesus. Floppy disks and everything. What about going back in time? Even though, well, maybe there's monitors everywhere. What is she doing? She, she is. She's playing with the lights. The lights, Miss Weaver. Everything seems to be fine. I don't have the luxury of being complacent, Deputy Grant. The bulbs will need changing soon. You can't change them in the dark. Yes, you can. I'll be sure to take care of it, Miss Weaver. Have a nice day now. Very good. I'll come back later on to remind you, just in case. You do that. Mr. Wake? Hi. The sheriff is waiting for you in her office down the corridor. This corridor? This way? Going this that way. That was Cynthia Weaver. That's nice. I guess you can call her the Go town this way. eccentric. Uh -huh. She used to be the editor of the local newspaper, but she's focused on um, well, other things these days. Like light bulbs. Nothing wrong with that, I guess. Coffee thermos, and we got a manuscript page here. Alice looked through the viewfinder, lining up the shot. Cauldron Lake was breathtaking. Something caught her eye. A figure standing in the shadows behind the cabin, like a thin woman in a black dress. She lowered the camera and looked again. No one there. Just a collection of bushes that looked vaguely human-shaped. She shook her head and laughed. Uh-huh. That's never a good sign. Yeah, it's uh, Mulligan here. I'm at Stucky's gas station with Thornton. There's no sign of him. Over. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, this is Thorn. Look, we've located the brake float. It's here. That's some good news, right? Sure. We're supposed to be driving it at the rehearsal today. 
Over. Oh, give me that. Mulligan here. Looks like someone really thrashed the garage. Over. Okay, roger that, guys. Keep looking for Stucky. James out. Who are you, and where are you reading this from? I mean, that's a switch right there, so who... Okay, never mind. The sheriff wants to see you in her office, Mr. Wade. Thank you. Appreciate you telling me again the same thing that you already told me once. Missing. Richard Brog, Bruce Dansky, I, Dansky, I guess. Jacob Miller. On a camp trip. Overdue. I have, haven't been in contact. If you have seen them or know their whereabouts, please call 555-9932. Thank you. Have you seen this man? Disappeared on 6-2007. Identifying features, knack for winning contests. That's... It's not a very good feature to tell people about. When they're looking for a guy. Just saying. Come in, Mr. Wake. Your phone's on the desk. The that was creepy. Was dead. It's charged now. Well, well thank you. You're, you're a very helpful sheriff. Have you now started what? looking for my wife yet? My men are already on it. Now, can you tell me what happened? I'm not sure. I can't remember. We were arguing. I walked out of the cabin. The cabin on Cauldron Lake? Mm-hmm. How did you end up at Stucky's gas station? I walked. I wanted to tell her what had happened last night, but I couldn't. That's usually how people end up, up anywhere. Excuse me. I need to take this. Yeah, she's convinced. Hello? Alice, please help me. Alice? Stop talking to the law. You'll do exactly what I say if you ever want to see your wife again. Oh, you motherfucker. This? Go to the back lot. There's a hole in the fence on the left. Look inside the junker. I left a little something there to convince you we're all on the same page here. After you ditch the cops, you're gonna meet me in Elderwood National Park. There's a spot called Lover's Peak. Midnight. Don't do nothing stupid, pal. For watching you. I need some fresh air. Can I go out? In the back, maybe? Of course, Mr. Wake. I understand. You can get there through the cells. Deputy Grant can show you the way. I'm oh, sorry. Day. All of this, it's just a lot to take in. Take your time, Mr. Wake. I understand. Can I ask you what the call was about, Mr. Wake? No. It's personal. Well, we are looking for your wife, and I'm going to need your cooperation if I'm going to help you. Um, I need so a be a bit of a dick. After I get some fresh air. Okay. You can find me here. We'll talk when you feel up to it. Yep, still being a bit of a dick on. Mr. Wake, can I help you with anything? I Just need walking to get through. some air. The sheriff said I could go out back. Of course, Mr. Wake. Uh, you can get there through the cell corridor. Hey, 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 What's up? Turn the light. The light's on. The deputies, they won't, they don't understand. They won't listen to me. I... I need it to be I feel your pain, bro. Thank I feel you. your pain. You're all right. You're a good guy. Don't let anybody tell you different. You know I shouldn't even be in here? The cops, they got it all wrong. You, you seem a little drunk, my friend. Sure, sure, sure. I beat him up, but I wasn't drunk. Why I are you now? I wasn't drunk at the time. Ah. I only got drunk after. Okay, listen. Listen, listen. listen, listen, I'm listening. Carefully now. Here's the kicker. That wasn't Danny. No, sir. It only looked like him. You want to know who it really was? i tell you who it really was. It was a goddamn space alien! Alright, we're done talking. I know it sounds like something a drunk would say, but believe me. I wasn't drunk then. But you're drunk now, so yeah. In spite of its human mask, to describe the dark presence as intelligent would have implied human qualities on something decidedly inhuman. Nonetheless, it found the one spot in the diner that was dark enough. Some light spilled into the corridor, ravaging it. But it took the pain. Horrible as it was, the writer would soon fix that. He would be coming to the one place where it still had power. The lake, I guess. The early morning light hurt my eyes and made my head ache. The man on the phone had said, go through the fence on the left. 
Coffee Thermos. And radio show. Well, folks, it's been another long night, and uh, it's about time for me to sign up. God knows I need my beauty sleep. <laughs> uh, just one more item before I go. It's been a busy night for the Sheriff's Department. We've had a few broken windows, even a report of shots fired on Main Street. Deputies Mulligan and Thornton had to deal with two intoxicated young men who were celebrating the completion of their Deer Fest float. Now, folks, we get this every year. I know it's exciting that the big day is almost here, but let's save it for the party and leave the gunplay for the shooting competition, huh? There's no point in getting all worked up yet. True enough. Screw the police! Screw the police! Just kidding. The caller had told me to find a hole in the fence behind the police station. Hold there on. was something for me in an abandoned car. I know. I'm just being annoying and hoping she doesn't... Look, she doesn't even see me. Hey! I'm jumping in your car. I'm over here. Hello? Fine. You're no fun. So fun no one yells at you. Yes, I kind of figured out where to go. Dude, that was one hell of a powerful kick. Alice's driver's license had been placed on the front seat. Wow, you saw that phone over there. Business. That was impressive. Barry? Ow! Ow! Thank God! Where the hell have you been? I've been trying to reach you for a week, you and Alice. I've been worried sick. I flew out yesterday. I'm here, here in Bright Falls. Barry, listen to me. I'm at the sheriff's station. Come and get me. I can't talk now. I had to get the sheriff to let me go. I needed to you get hung to up Elderwood on National Dick. Park to meet Alice's... The kidnapper fired his gun one last time, and the shadow vanished into the darkness it had come from. See? Nothing to it, Wake. The thought of Alice in his hands was revolting. We stood on the wooden platform of Lover's Peak, the waterfall on the mountain behind us, the lights of the radio mast blinking red in the heights above. I fought with the urge to take a swing, force myself to speak. Let's cut the act now. Where's my wife? dies. Darkness will reclaim it. It's a long, hard journey into the dark. Alice's life is at stake, but I can't think about that, or I'll lose it. The dread lingers at the edge of perception. I'll push on. Anything is possible here. I'll write the story. I'll save her. Well, good luck with that. Marvelous. Creepy Alan. I just wanted to settle all the death oh, no. the Anderson brothers might have oh, fuck you, man. caused on their recent Regrettable little outing. They are not accountable for their actions. You know what, dear course, my. I can assure you that my Are you feeling any better, Mr. Yeah, Wade? I'm feeling great. I'd like to leave. Am I free to go? Well, we still need to talk about... Am I under arrest? No, of course not. But I need to know where you'll be staying so I can get in touch with you. I'd avoid the motel. The Majestic is known for its roaches. The cabins at Elderwood are pretty nice, though. That well, sounds thank perfect. You. I'm Dr. Emil Hartman. I'd like to invite you to stay at Cauldron Lake Lodge. Oh, fuck you, Did bro. Did you talk to my wife? I had the pleasure of discussing your situation with her on several occasions. Did you set something up with her? I invited her here. My clinic is a you place where... Punch, yeah. oh, yep. oh, hey, oh, my. Take it easy. Uh-oh. Hey, Bad -ass nobody boots. move. Get your hands off of my client. Who are you? I'm Barry Wheeler, his agent. If you have business with Mr. Wake, you talk to me. You yokels won't know what hit you once I sick my lawyers on your asses. Very no awesome. Done, Sarah. I'm all right. I don't want to press charges. Mr. Wake, my offer still stands. Get me out of here. What the hell was that about, Al? 
We don't need a replay of that thing with the paparazzi. I thought they were gonna lock you up. <laughs> Al is an asshole. Just saying. He has a bit of a temper. I had to talk to someone. I told Barry I like everything. Him, though. He's a good guy. He thought I was certifiable, but when he heard about the manuscript, I had him. The fact that I'd written something, even if I couldn't remember it, was enough for him. He smelled money. And uh -oh. he believed that Alice had 